So with your experiences at Chan and Ella, Ed, uh, you know, can you tell us how you were able to build a solid referral system? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's easy to say it. <laughs> it's easy to talk about it. All right. But it's uh, very hard to do. When, when I was practicing, you know, it was, it was a lot easier because I've got control over what I do and I'm someone that will implement. So I'll go and implement it. But, um, but the people below you is another, another matter to getting the, the senior client managers to do it. So the, the, the biggest challenge, of course, is to get those senior client managers to stop doing the work. And, uh, and there's all, you know, all sorts of different challenges. So, and I covered some of those earlier. Like mm -hmm. they may not have the right team below them. They may not know how to manage. Uh, mm -hmm. They may like doing the work. So they want to sit there and do the work. Um, they might get a, a, a complaint uh, from one of their staff and instead of, you know, leading, they end up following, uh, following the complaint and then they end up going down a different path instead of, you know, being solid, holding firm and just continuing to bring their team with them. Um, they'll then end up following the team wherever their team's leading them instead of them leading the team. So there are all sorts of different challenges. So the the biggest challenge in, in, in Chananella, and you'll find this, you know, in your own firm, if you're the senior client manager, then it's a lot easier because you're attending these sessions and you're getting the information and you're getting encouragement. And when we break off into groups, you'll see other people doing it as well, and that will give you some more encouragement. Mm -hmm. But the, your senior client managers are in, in, their, in their office and they're isolated from all this information and the, 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 the vibe and the, the, the discussions and... Uh, that you're listening to here it makes it easier for you to do it if you're the senior client manager but your senior client managers are at, at back at the office they're not listening to all of these things and and you've got to go back and you've got to you know ex, uh, explain it to them and you've got to then lead them and of course they're going to be skeptical they're going to push back they're going to have a lot of work on they're going to say to you things like i haven't got time to do that but what i found is whenever someone when a client manager says i haven't got time it's because they're doing the wrong kind of work you know, they're sitting there doing the grinding or their team, the team below them are not trained up or that you don't have the right people in the right seat playing in positions, in the right positions. So then they get pushed back from their team and then, then they push back on you. And that's, that's not leadership, all right? So you need to lead. And uh, leading is to get them, encourage them constantly because you don't just say it once to them because there are people who are early adopters and late adopters and middle adopters. And the late adopters requires you to prosecute the case, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 times until, you know, they change their habits. And I use this analogy. If you, if you brush your teeth with your right hand and I told you to change hands and brush it with your left hand, it's not going to be comfortable after doing it once. So for those of you who are managing, just saying it to your staff once isn't going to do anything. You've got to say it over and over again, just like you've got to brush your teeth with your left hand for like a you know, hundred times before it feels comfortable, before you have a change of a habit. So habits are very entrenched. So you've got to realize that uh, when you're managing people, that just saying it once and then getting frustrated because they don't you know, do what you say is not the way, it, that's not how you do it. You've got to be very patient. You've got to prosecute the case many, many times. And the early adopters will, will, will change pretty much straight away. Uh, the middle adopters will take four or five times of telling them, and the late adopters may take 10 or 20 times uh, before they change their habits. So, um, so don't get discouraged just because someone pushes back or someone says, I haven't got time. Mm. Well, drill into the reasons why they don't have time because our team, you should, a, a team of four or five should be able to manage about a million dollars in fees. And they should be able to do that if everybody's playing in position and everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. If people don't do what they're supposed to be doing and they, they, they jump into doing other things, like the client managers jumps into doing grinding work, well, that whole, that whole process is, is thrown, thrown mm. off, off kilter. And, uh, and then you've got to bring it back on board. And, and of course, you're going to have, and someone might be out of position, meaning that they, 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 you know, they, they're a grinder, but you put them into a manager role. And it's very hard to change a leopard spots 
I found that you know you could if you if you train and train and train them, they might lift for about ten percent or twenty percent, but they'll they'll stay there for a few a few weeks and then they drift back to what their natural level was. So you've got to understand that uh, that you you've got to pay play people in position, and if they are suited to that role, then when you when you train them, you'll get a lot of traction back. You'll get a lot of results back. But if you put someone in the wrong position, like a grinder in the minder role, you know, it's really hard work and it's not fair on you. And it's also not fair on them because you play them out of position. So you've got to understand your people. And uh, so it's not a, you know, it's, it's a combination of all those things. That's okay. Yeah. Or well, Tim, would you like to, uh, add anything to that as well? Um, I think just what Ed said there is just really key. Um, it's about knowing your team and knowing the people in the team and their limitations and their ability. One of the things I do in, in Wise Growth when I'm uh, meeting the firms for the first time is we go through every single team member and we ask them, what is the full potential of this team member? And sometimes the owner kind of scratches their head and oh, I'm not really sure. And other times they say, oh, they could be an eight, but they're currently a six. And if you think of yourself, you're really like a business coach, not a business coach, sorry, you're like a coach in your own business, rather. Mm. And your job is to get the most out of the team. And um, I've complained to Ed before about team members not being um, up to scratch in certain areas. And um, there's a difference between having a natural tendency to be good at selling or good at managing or good at doing and someone being a superstar employee. And oftentimes Ed will come back at me and say, Tim, you want that person to be a superstar the whole point of the team is that uh, people complement each other. And so people don't have to be superstars. And if you couple that methodology of the deep and narrow teams, people complementing each other and having really, really good, strong systems in place, you, you'll see relatively ordinary people. I'm pretty ordinary myself. I will be able to achieve far, far, far more than, um, you know, a, a firm full of expensive superstars with no system, no structure. So I can't emphasize enough. You've really got to know your team. And um, my production managers really know the, you know, the grinders they have, whether they be onshore, offshore, they know their potential better than I do. And so it's not about you knowing if you're in a bigger firm, I've got three teams. It's not about me knowing every single person's potential, but the direct manager reports really do have to know their potential to mm -hmm. get that out of them. So yeah. you're just echoing what Ed said, 100% agree. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the other thing is, if you're looking for that superstar, A, they're really hard to find, and B, um, you're you're held to ransom by them because if they leave, then um, then your whole place falls apart. You don't want that flat team structure. You want a deep and narrow team structure for so many reasons. Not only to ensure that the that the work is done efficiently, uh, but the, the 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 price to the client is fair um, because you don't want a really high cost person doing very low level work and charging that to the client. You know, there you shouldn't pass on your own efficiencies onto the client. You should be delivering, you should be managing a business um, very efficiently so that the client gets the best value um, and, and your team gets the best value and, and so forth. So everybody wins. Mm. 